Covalent bonding. So the first thing we want to remember <clears throat> that we're going to have a covalent compound if we have two nonmetals. So here's some rules for naming with covalent compounds. The first element of the formula is going to be named using the element name, just like in ionic compounds. The second element name is going to be um, <clears throat> named with the root of the element and adding an IDE, just like in ionic compounds. Here's the difference. We're going to be adding prefixes to tell us how many of each element there are. And the reason why we're doing this is because in covalent compounds, they can combine in different ratios, unlike ionic compounds, which always combine in the same ratio. So here are some exceptions to the rule. One is if there's only one of the first element, you don't use mono. So you've heard of carbon dioxide before. It's not mono carbon dioxide, it's just carbon dioxide. And this one's a little weird, but you'll get the hang of it. If there's an element name beginning with a vowel, you drop the last vowel in the prefix. Um, that'll kind of come with time. Uh, here's an example of that. If there are three iodine atoms in the second element, then it would be triiodine. Um, <clears throat> okay, so. Uh, there, we wouldn't put two I's in there, basically, is what the rule says. Okay, so those prefixes are right here in your periodic table. You don't have to memorize them, but you do need to know when to use them. They're diatomic molecules. These are molecules that are going to exist in nature as partners, as pairs, diatomic. Um, they, If you find them in nature, um, they're never going to exist as single atoms. Here is our list. The diatomic elements are right next door, okay? If you notice, okay, so you have hydrogen by itself, and then the rest of them are going to create a little seven on the periodic table, starting with nitrogen, going over to oxygen, over to fluorine, and then down all the way to iodine, okay? It just creates a little seven right there. That's how I remember it. So, examples of covalent naming, okay? So you have your list of rules above you, but what you're going to do is you're going to take the first one and you are going to look that up if you don't know the symbol, phosphorus is P. Now I know there's one P because it doesn't have a prefix. Remember one of your exceptions to the rules is I don't have to write mono here because it's just assumed on the first one. Now on the second one, I have trifluoride. So fluorine is fluoride and tri means three. If you don't know the prefixes, look them on your periodic table, but it's most of them are pretty self-explanatory. They're similar to the gons in geometry. So S silicon is SI. If you don't know it, look it up. And again, there's no prefix, so I know that's one. Tetrafluoride, fluoride is F. Tetra means four. So writing formulas for covalent compounds are super duper easy. Dinitrogen, nitrogen is N. Di means two. Trioxide, oxide means oxygen. Tri means three. Now, the opposite. So the opposite is equally as easy. You don't have to look up any charges. You don't have to switch any charges. The problem for you is going to have to be able to remember the ionic rules when they come up. But for now, so B, look that up if you don't know it, is boron. And there's two of them. So I have to do di, boron. There's four H's, so that's tetra hydride. You still change the ending on those just like you do for covalent. 
So C is carbon. Now I don't put the prefix on it because I don't have to. There's one O. I do have to put the prefix on that one because we've all heard of carbon dioxide, right? Well, this is not that. This is carbon monoxide. Okay, N is nitrogen. There's three H's, so that's tri. Now, hydrogen's an interesting one. It's hydride. Okay. So this is so easy. I feel like you should be able to get it from here, but if not, let me know and I'll help you.